What's going on, everybody? It is your man, Corey. And as you can see, I do not have my digital dash background. I don't have my fancy on-screen graphics, man. I ain't even got on my I signed myself t-shirt, man. What I'm doing today is pretty much testing out. This is the pilot episode for an idea that me and Sean have been bouncing back for a while, right? Like, we realized that the channel's doing well, man. You know, we drop a lot of game over here. We drop a lot of value. But one thing we probably don't do well enough is entertain. And you can be nice to us, man. Or you can be as nice as you want to be. You can tell us that all of y'all are here just to learn from us. But we know that at the end of the day, man, you want to argue with us. You want to talk about some stuff that isn't really like, you know, this Facebook ad to help you out. You want to be able to debate with us, man. Like, I know some of y'all been waiting to call me stupid, bro. I can feel it. I can feel it in here. So, pretty much what I said was like, yo, Sean, let me do a show, you know what I'm saying, once a week. Let me go over a couple of topics that's been going on in music news from time to time. You know, let, let's see how people re respond to it. Let's see how they react to it. So, this is a pilot episode. Your response to this pretty much determines whether or not we keep this going or, you know, I package this up really neatly, really nicely and try to sell it to, like, Adam Ivy, a smart rapper or something. You know what I'm saying? But I love to keep it here. Love to keep this idea going. So, if you like it, please leave some comments in the comment section below. Let Sean know what's up. Come and hit me and let me know what's up. I'm going to be real with y'all, man. I don't even have a name for this yet. Like, that's a really bad, bad attribute that I have is I suck at naming stuff. So, if you have a really dope name for this show, you think of something or you got something, let me know, man. Hit me up on your favorite socials. Corey to save you on everything. IG, Twitter, Snapchat, I don't know, TikTok, everything, bro. Corey to save you on everything. So, let's dive straight into some topics now. The first thing that I want to talk about is this is this is a pretty wild case, man. Is there's been a teenager out of Florida that has been arrested for pretty much reciting like some foul rap lyrics from a rapper by the name of Glock Nine. So allegedly, what happened was this teenager, this 13 year old out in Florida, pretty much was like you know doing 13 year old shit in the classroom, bullshitting around, and he says something about having a wedgie, ended up pulling his pants down. Teacher's like, nah, not here, bro. You got to get out. So the student says no, doesn't leave, stays in the classroom, and starts pretty much like talking to other people in the room, harassing people, still doing like teenager stuff. So the teacher, understandably getting frustrated, like you know how teachers are, tries to kick him out again. She tells him to leave. You need to get out in the classroom. So as this young dude is leaving now, as this teenager is leaving out of the room, he pretty much referenced like a Glock 9 lyric that got him in trouble. Now, for those of you that don't know, Glock 9 is an upcoming rapper who's based out of Florida. He's been associated with like Kodak Black. Um, pretty big on like the underground like trap scene, I would say. Uh, he's gotten into some legal trouble himself, but for those of you that may know who he is, up and coming rapper out of Florida based out of trap scene. He has some cool songs, but like I said, this teenagers getting kicked out of the room and says to his teacher, let me find it. Okay, so he's getting escorted out of the room or leaving the classroom. The 13-year-old turns to the teacher and says, this is not over, I got my Glock 9. Teacher loses his shit, calls the police. Um, the teenager, of course, jumps to the defense of, I wasn't serious, I was reciting a lyric and the lyric is Glock from Glock 9's song, um, bounce out with that Glock 9, you know, another gun reference song. Now. When I first saw this story, I was like, man, this is kind of stupid. But I started really thinking about it, and I was like, man, if they will use a rapper's lyrics to, you know, catch him lacking in and put him in jail, of course they're going to use the lyrics for a rapper to get a 13-year in trouble. Now, from what I've seen so far, the 13-year-old the, the has not, like, been convicted of anything, like, super serious. Um, like, what I saw was, like, he's getting charged with... I think like a some type of like threat with a weapon like it's, it's not like super serious as if, as if you really had the gun but it's still like a pretty serious case especially for a 13 year old to have and the more i thought about it the less sympathetic i kind of became towards the kid because i'm thinking like man you have to really pay attention to like the modern state of the country right like what's one thing that we are all pretty shook up about pretty much school shootings like school shootings have been at you know like a different type of high for the past couple of years and that's an issue that when you think about it man like teachers and students really have to worry about that like it's crazy to say but in 2019 and moving forward like you really have to be mentally prepared um 
for something like that to happen at your school or to happen at a school around people that you may know. So I can completely understand like this teacher like flipping out when she heard this. I can understand her being afraid in the situation, like hearing a student go like, yo, I got a Glock 9, you know what I'm saying? Like it would throw me off like if a 13 year old, I'm like, yo, get out. And he's like, no, I got this Glock 9. That would throw me off, I'm not gonna lie. And then plus like you can't expect your middle school teacher. You don't. You can't expect Miss Johnson to know a Glock 9 lyric. So the fact that the kid tried to use it as an excuse and just go, hey, I'm reciting song lyrics, this is a me, it's not going to fly, man. It's not like you're reciting Drake lyrics or like Meg Stallion lyrics. Like you're quoting Glock 9. In a situation that the teacher had already deemed to be serious, like it didn't seem like a playful situation, like they'd already pretty much told you to get out and you weren't trying to get out, man. So... Man, I wish the best of this kid. I hope he doesn't get anything. Like, I hope nothing serious happens to him. Like, I don't hope that... I don't want this to be a blemish on his record. But, bro, like, I hope he walks away from this situation having learned a very valuable lesson. Stop messing with your teachers like this, especially since they can't whoop your ass. They can't really respond back to these weird threats that you give. And if you know you don't mean it, you don't even want to be in that situation, don't even do it, bro. Don't even make those types of jokes. Like, it's not funny. Um, so eat those consequences, little bro. I wish you the best. And then kind of following up with some, some more, you know, legal news. Not really. This is going to be pretty depressing, man. A lot of this news I have for you is not like the most optimistic upbeat news. But YK Osiris has been arrested on aggravated assault charges. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, who is YK Osiris, right? He does have a big breakout song, you know what I'm saying? He has the, how does it go? The, um, I will give you the world, baby girl. That joint right there, that joint is hard. I can't even lie. So, YK Osiris, this new upcoming R&B singer. Um, he was on the XXL freshman list this past year. You know, he'd he been making some noise, like I said, with that, that song he had that was pretty big. Um, some controversial stuff he'd been saying. As far as being like the king of R&B in this new R&B generation, he was dubbing himself the king. His words, not mine, just saying what he said. And now he's kind of caught himself into some actual legal troubles, man. Rappers in his legal troubles, bro. So he's been arrested on aggravated assault and strangulation charges out here in Atlanta, out in Fulton County, man. And so pretty much the story goes that back in September, he was having a birthday party. His girlfriend at the time pretty much confronted him about a picture of a woman in a towel that he had in his phone. The altercation escalated and it somehow ended with YK Osiris biting her on the cheek underneath her eye and strangling her. And then, you know, people pretty much had to like break the whole situation up. Now, like I said, this happened back in September, but he was just arrested for it uh, as of a week ago as of, as of me recording this video. So it took them about a month to move forward with this with this case. Now, what I'm thinking when I hear this is like, man, um, one, I'm thinking they must feel like they have him on something pretty serious or they feel like they can make it like something like super serious and really move forward with it and get him because they're not giving him bond. He's still locked up as of me making this video. Um, and then like they moved really fast on it, right? Like, like I said, it happened in September and then right at the top of November, they moved on it, man. And I can tell you, man, as someone who lives in Atlanta, bro, like they arrested Todd Allison right in front of the busy bees, like people eating chicken while this man getting caught up for drug charges. So if you think you're going to come out to Atlanta and do something like assault, bro, and not get caught up, especially as a public personality, it's not going to happen, man. So... And it feels like we get like one or two of these a year, like some type of some type of claim or situation between like a rapper and their significant other that just escalates beyond the point that it should have escalated, man. Like, and it's like I'm not really like an advice giving guy, at least not for this type of stuff. But like, I always look at it like if you're someone in this position where everything could literally be taken away from you at the drop of one bad decision, man, you have to learn how not to let your emotions get the best of you. You have to learn to think that even if in this situation, you know, because we don't really completely know what happened. There's no footage. There's no details. There's no pictures. It's just witness accounts and the, their two accounts. So we don't know the complete story yet. Right. But I've heard enough of the story to hear like, OK, cool. This is classic case of two angry you know, couples or two angry people in, the, in a relationship arguing with each other. It escalates to a really high point, And now he's in a position of losing everything that he's been working for over the past year when he could have just you know yeah baby right it's my girl that's that's whatever on the phone 
I ain't trying to deal with this right now and walk away from it. So another case of another artist that like, you know, if he did it, of course he should suffer the consequences, deal with the crime, deal with everything that comes with it. Um, if it's just a case of like allegations, man, I, I wish the best. I hope that it gets resolved. And of course on her end, man, I hope that like no serious damages were like incurred. I hope that she's not scarred over this. I hope that she's cool. Like she can move past everything and like be okay. Uh, but yeah, man, I can't even make a joke about this. Like uh, that's, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. All you rappers out here, man, all you rappers, cause it's always a rapper. We never hear about like a, like a, like a R and B songstress, like beating on their boyfriend or something. Um, so all you rappers out here, man, that, that just feel the need to put your hands on like a woman or a significant other, other man, just don't bro. Do what you gotta do to get yourself out of the headspace. Move differently, man. Keep yourself out of these legal troubles because as you can see how fast they're moving with this, bro, the legal system is not playing with you. The moment they hear about it, they will move on you and get you out of here, bro. <sighs> yeah, man. So I kind of want to get into this right here because this is, this is, in my opinion, like really fucked up. This is a classic example of like the government trying to stop a bag, right? So it's being reported that ICE won't let 21 Savage tour outside of the country, outside of the U.S. So if you're unfamiliar, 21 Savage went through an incident earlier this year in which he was detained for being like an illegal immigrant into the country. It was a really weird time in the internet that produced like a lot of really funny memes, even though it wasn't like a funny situation. I remember feeling really weird at the moment, like, man, these memes are hilarious, but this is a very serious situation, especially being here in Atlanta where there are a lot of people that like know him, you know? Um, so he went through that whole situation. He got out, of course, you know, he's free. He's out in the world doing his thing, but ICE would not let him tour domestically or internationally. And all of you artists know that the streaming bag is cool, you know what I'm saying? The feature bag is cool, but that tour bag, bro, that tour bag is where it's at. So he eventually gets a working visa, I think back in like a couple months ago, maybe in like October, September, and they finally start letting him tour domestically, but they're still not letting him leave the country. And going back to that tour bag, man, the domestic bag is one type of money, but the, the people in Germany, bro, the people in the UK and Europe and all those places, that bag is a little bit different. So I can understand him missing that bag. Not to mention that's like, it's like the government coming in and shutting down like 40% of your entire business. So you may be asking like, man, what's the hold up? Why is it taking so long? Why are they doing this to him? And the reason being what's holding it up is that 21 Savage has yet to have a court date for his situation. Now, the big problem with that is that the Atlanta immigration courts are trying not to have any cases come to court until 2022. So this is the government essentially asking 21 Savage, hey, we're not, or telling 21 Savage, hey, we're going to stop you from working for the next two years. And understandably from his point and his team's point is like, we can't let that happen. We can't let this incidence, this misunderstanding stop us from making our money. This is how we make our money. So um, more details are kind of coming out about it. I, for one, am glad that he's able to start by touring domestically. Like I know he just did a show at Complex Con. Um, I'm pretty sure he, he'll probably do something out here pretty soon. I feel like in my soul of soul that like a project is probably coming. He may hit the domestic streets just to do a tour or something, especially with all of this happening. Like I'm pretty sure like legal fees and stuff are stacking up where he's probably itching to get back on the road and make some money. But for some, for them to tell you like, man, first we're gonna kick, first we're gonna kick you out of the country. Nah, now we're gonna keep you here, but we're not gonna let you leave the country to go make your money. That's crazy, man, that's stupid to me. That seems to be like a really big, um, like a really, a really big extremity that doesn't need to be taken. Especially when like, man, you see some of these cases of like billionaires and millionaires who have done a lot worse things that are able to move a lot more freely. Then they're allowing this rapper from Atlanta who is allegedly an illegal immigrant and is not supposed to be in the country. That's crazy. So another case of like, you know, that's really fucked up, but hopefully like I wish the best for 21 Savage. I hope he comes out of this being able to do his thing. Um, and like, I really do like, I kind of hope that this, this immigration legal system kind of sees that, all right, man, maybe we're taking it too far. Like maybe we're like, maybe this is a little bit too extreme, you know, but in other news and more positive news, um, I guess it's not really too positive. It's kind of like, like bad news really, but 
Drake, man, Drake is back in our headlines due to some business moves that he's been making. Now, it's being reported that Drake is going to start a weed business, man. He's hopping into the cannabis industry like every other celebrity and millionaire and doing it the, the way that only Drake knows how to do. So he started the company. Um, it's called like, what is it? More Life. Um, where is it? I just saw it. It's like, it's, it's pretty much like based around his album, More Life. It's like More Life Cannabis or something like that. And the company is going to focus on providing cannabis products and herbs, medicinal herb extracts, teas, rolling papers, merch, and dried plants. So pretty much Drake is about to be the plug. Like, And it's wild because I was thinking, like Drake had a line in one of his songs that was like, what does it say? Like, I got a duck behind Chubbs just to hit the cush up. So for Drake to go from feeling like, man, I can't even be associated with weed. Like, my clean brand is so strong that I can't even be associated with a blunt. To 2019, hey, all of you, I'm about to start selling weed to y'all. It's crazy, but I guess it is different times. And I don't know, man. Like, I was talking to my roommate about it, and he was like, yo, if you had to pick between that Khalifa Kush... <laughs> And then more life, bro, what you going with? And I was like, man, I got to go with more life, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, if somebody was like, yo, bro, you trying to hit this more life? That shit sound like it'll, it'll have you crazy, bro. Like, it sounds like a wild ride, man. But, <laughs> like, for real, like, it sounds like, it, it, it doesn't sound, it sounds like it's going to have you stuck on the sofa. But, it, in, in all seriousness, man, I personally believe that Drake is trying to position himself to be like the Jay-Z of our generation, right? Like, from what we see publicly, man, Drake is probably one of the more business savvy artists that are out there. That's not to say that there aren't other business savvy artists out there. They just don't make it as public as Drake does. Like, trust me, man, I've met some of these artists in their teams and you think like they're stupid. And then really on the back end, they'd be like flipping houses and owning like 13 McDonald's and like making hella money outside of music. It's crazy. But Drake lets us know. Drake shows his moves and shows us what he's doing. And then he capitalizes off of it right in front of us. Now, what was really interesting to me about this at first is I was like, this may honestly be one of the most like least Drake brand things. Cause like I said, like you don't really think of Drake as like a smoker. Like I've never once in my life thought like, man, I like to smoke a blunt with Drake. Like when he started that strip club in Houston, that made a lot of sense, right? That nightclub, I don't remember the name of it, but it made a lot of sense. Cause you think Drake, you think women, you think nightclubs, strip clubs, that made a lot of sense. But weed and Drake, man, I don't know, man. I think I think this may really just be the product of like him paying attention to like No Jumper and like Wiz and just other rappers and stuff and thinking like, man, if they can sell weed, I can sell weed. And like I said, man, next time I go to LA, if it's out, I'm definitely, I'm, I might definitely have to be like, yo, bro, throw me one of the pre rolls of the More Life. I'm trying to see what's up. <laughs> and he hasn't been doing any heavy promo on it. It's like a post on his Instagram if you want to go check that out. And he's been sending like these care packages to some of his celebrity friends, doing like this really cloudy influencer campaign for his own stuff, right? That's been the route he's chosen to take with it. But I'm sure we'll hear more about it as as as, as more details come out, um, as he starts to really move forward with the branding for it and really pushing out. I'm sure we'll see this everywhere. Um, and I really want to know, man. Y'all let me know in the comments, bro. You 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 rocking with the more life, or you rocking with the Khalifa Kush, bro? Like what y'all doing? Don't try to be clean on here and act like you don't know what's up, bro. I need to know, Khalifa Kush more life what you're trying to do and lastly 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 i had to save this for last man because this topic has just been like breaking the internet i almost didn't do this topic and as i was walking into my room to set up for this my roommate was like yo bro you got to talk about this i'm like i gotta talk about it i don't think they want to they want to hear about it he's like no nah, everybody's talking about this you'd be stupid not to talk about it talk about it bro i'm like all right man i guess you know what's best or you don't know what's best but you on the other side of the wall content creator wall you see what the people see let me talk about what the people want to talk about <laughs> and that is man these wild comments that ti has made about taking his daughter to the gynecologist so ti was doing an episode of a podcast the podcast is called ladies like us and during the podcast they got to a conversation about parenting and in this conversation ti made sure to let us know that he goes with his daughter, his teenage daughter, to her yearly gynecology visits to make sure that she's still a virgin. Um, and he tells this story about how he went to the doctor, the doctor saying things like, yeah, man, you know, sometimes like horseback riding or um, like bike riding or like sports can break the hymen. 
And T.I. was like, nah, fam, I ain't trying to hear all that. She don't play no sports. She don't ride no bikes. She ain't on no horses. We ain't got no horses out in Atlanta, bro. Let me know if her hymen is broke. And then he took great pride in, of course, stating that, you know, from what he knows from these visits, her hymen is still intact. His daughter's a virgin as far as, you know, he knows. And, you know, I guess he kind of felt good about that. Now, of course, all hell broke loose on the internet. Broke loose from Planned Parenthood had something to say. Other celebrities had something to say. And then, of course, women had something to say. Because, and I understand it, is they're basically saying that T.I. is pretty much like policing his daughter's body. And, you know, what she does with her sexuality and all this stuff. And I'm not a parent, so I can't speak on what that feeling must feel like to wonder if your child is having sex or not. Um, but I'm just kind of thinking of it from like the point of like a rational human being and how that could drive someone away. And then how that does feel probably feels like personally invasive because it's not like it's not like a young daughter. I mean, she's like 18 and we don't know how long he's been going with her. So, I mean, he could have been going, I would guess as early as probably like 13 or 14 based on the comments he was making. Um, so, I mean, I guess I could kind of understand, like, you want to know if your 14-year-old is having sex. Like, that is something that, as a parent, I would want to know. But at this point, like, if he's still doing it at 18 and moving forward, that's extreme, man. Um, I was always taught that the best thing a parent can do is teach their child what's up and then hope they make the best decisions because at the end of the day, you can't really control their decisions. You can just hope that you didn't send a terrible human being out into the world that was based around terrible principles that you were teaching them. Um, so, man, like I was saying, like, all hell broke loose on the internet. I've been reading comments on his posts all day on Twitter, and even people around me have been talking about it and all have something to say about it. And that's pretty much that everyone I seem to see feels like T.I. is in the wrong. They feel like he, he's going too far. He's being too overprotective. He's being too involved in that side of his daughter's life. Uh, I guess more involved than most people would want their parents to be or would want to be with their children in that situation. Like I said, I'm not a parent, so I don't completely understand everything that he's trying to do with it. Like, I maybe kind of understand. Like I said, like I can understand wanting to know if you're a 14-year-old or 15-year-old is having sex. Um, but outside of that, man, like, definitely want to hear what you guys think. Um, definitely want to know where you fall on this. I don't know if any of you are parents or how many of you are parents. Or just, you know, what do you feel about this as a whole morally, period, man? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Drop them in the comment sections below. And then, of course, I could not do a music-based show without, you know, letting y'all know pretty much what music is coming out this week that, that I'm looking out for. So Doja Cat is dropping her project, Hot Pink. Really big fan of Doja Cat, man. I honestly think she's probably one of the most talented female rappers to come out in, like, the last, like, shit, I would argue, decade. Like, she's really creative. Her visuals are always dope. She seems like a really funny and like cool person. And her last project was actually really dope. It was way more poppy than I thought it would be. Um, Cause I don't know, everything I've ever seen of Doja Cat is always like her like singing or like actually like rapping, like spitting. And then to hear that project and hear like how like Britney Spears, Rihanna-esque pop it sounded, um, kind of like threw me off, but I did like what I heard. And all the singles she dropped from that one joint with Tyga, the Juicy joint to, um, all the stuff she's been dropping this year actually has me like really excited for this project. So I'm gonna be checking that joint out. And then you got my guy Rex Life Raj, man, with Father Figure 3. Rex Life Raj is this really cool artist based out of the West Coast. I'm not gonna lie to you. I haven't dove too deep into his catalog, but I've heard enough songs from him that like I'm personally really interested to see like what he has to, uh, to offer. Um, I know he's coming, he's going on tour pretty soon because I think he's coming through Atlanta in like a week or so. So I plan on going to check this show out just to kind of like see what he's about. Um, and like I said, like the two or three songs I have heard from Rex Life Raj have all been really dope. Uh, like I'm a really big fan of West Coast music in general. I think that, you know, y'all are really close second to the South, man. You know, y'all make some pretty, pretty dope music. But just everyone around me has been talking about him, like friends in my circle, just people I associate myself with. Like I said, I saw that tour, which felt, which felt random. I didn't think he would come out here. So I'm gonna definitely check that joint out. And then, you know, other other honorable mentions, uh, Young and Ace, Step Harder, man. Young and Ace is another up and coming rapper that's been pretty dope. Uh, I recently watched an interview he did with Adam on No Jumper, and that kind of made me like him a little bit more as a person. He seems like a really chill guy, really laid back dude with his head on straight. You know, like one of those like, one of those street dudes that like, 
you know, probably would fuck you up, but like means good 98% of the time. That's what it, that's the kind of vibe I got from Young and Ace. And then Jacquees is dropping his King of R&B album, man. We've been dealing with Jacquees calling himself the King of R&B for a minute now, man. I'm sure this project is pretty much him just capitalizing off of all that viral hype he got from that. But I'm sure, I'm 100% positive, and I'm here for it, that we are going to get some R&B beef because of this project. I don't know who it's going to be with. Everything in me tells me probably Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez has that Chicks Tape joint coming out in like a month or two. But all I know, man, is that these new R&B dudes, bro, are not going to let Jacquees get away with calling himself the king of R&B. I mean, sadly, YK Osiris isn't out to fight it. I know he would have something to say about it. But somebody's going to say something about it, man. We getting some R&B beef because of this project. So, you know, I'm here for it. I'm trying to see what's up, man. I don't think we've seen R&B beef since, like, who was beefing? Who was the last R&B dudes to beef? Like Travis Scott and Tory Lanez, bro. And I count Travis Scott because Travis Scott be singing off key. So that's probably the closest we've gotten to in a minute, man. Um, but those are pretty much all the projects I'm looking forward to this week. If you got any more that you know are coming out, some I might have missed, let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, this is pretty much a pilot episode of Test for a series that I want to start doing here every week on the Brand Man channel, every Friday if I can help it. So, you know, drop your comments in the section below. Let me know what you think. Is there anything I need to change? Do you have a really cool name for me? Please give me a cool name for this show because I can't think of nothing. I suck at naming stuff, but I really need a name for this show. I got to brand it, bro. I got to put my marketing hat on and like do my whole thing with it. Outside of that, man, if you want more educational content from me, go and check out the Digital Dash. I'll put the links to those episodes in the show below. I'll be dropping some more new episodes starting this coming Tuesday and up. I just had to get my life together, man. I've been moving, moving around and stuff, getting settled. But we straight now, so I'll be back. And outside of that, if you like what you saw today, please like and share this video. Come and hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what you think. Or on Twitter. Or on TikTok. Wherever you can find me. At Cole with the Savior. At name will be in the description below. And I will see y'all next time.